Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I wanted to remind you of our Road to a Thousand Subscribers giveaway that we have going on our YouTube channel. If you subscribe and have a public profile, you'll be entered to win a free RX Smart Gear original jump rope. You'll get to pick the pattern of the handles, the color and weight of the cable, and you'll be getting one of the best selling, best performing jump ropes out there. Every time we hit a new century mark with the number of subscribers to our channel, we'll randomly select a new winner. And our friend Dave Newman is gonna throw in a little something extra for each winner. So a special thanks to our sponsor, RX Smart Gear, to Dave Newman for being such a great partner and to you for being a loyal listener. Good luck, and I hope you are our next winner. Hey everyone, welcome to the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends. My name is Scott Schweitzer. I am the Clydesdale, I'm your host. We love to do fitness. And this is my friend, Brett. Uh, Brett, what's going on? Not much, Scott. Just uh, back home in Canada after Waterpalooza. Just um, chatted with Annika a little bit and kind of making our next steps uh, moving forward. Yeah, so for people who don't know, Brett is the coach of one Miss Annika Greer, who has become a very good friend of the show. And we wanted to kind of get a different perspective on her um, journey through CrossFit and um, kind of her coming out party last weekend at Wadapalooza. Yeah, so sure. we're going to talk to Brett for a little bit today, um, kind of see how that all happened. But before we get into that, I want to learn a little, little bit more about you personally. Um, yeah. And so I know that you grew up in Prince Edward Island. Yeah, East Coast, Canada, um, in, the, in, a, in the country, next to Potato Field, pretty much. Yeah, and it's funny. I think I told Annika uh, the first time we had her on, um, when the Columbus Blue Jackets first started here in Columbus, Ohio, yeah, yeah. Um, they were run by people from Prince Edward Island. Doug McLean. Doug McLean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's a cottage like ten minutes down the road from where we are. My dad knows him um, pretty well, so he's uh, he's a big deal in PEI as well. And dad actually went down to Columbus back in the day and, and saw them playing and stuff because he knows him. So it's cool, cool connection there. Yeah, he used to always say like that people from PEI are different. And, and there's a grittiness to them. And, um, and he would always kind of preach that um, yeah. on his radio show and things like that here in Columbus. So um, yeah. when I met Annika, I was like, well, that's cool. I get to meet someone from PEI that I heard about a ton. So, yeah. so you grew up there, you moved away, but then you ended up coming back. And, and yeah. why did you move and why did you come back? Um, I went to a high school, international high school uh, in BC. And then I went to my kinesiology degree over in Nova Scotia, a province next to PEI. And then I went to travel, um, visit some friends over in Korea and Japan. And then I ended up teaching English there for a year, a um, year and a half. And I met some guys that did some CrossFit there in 2010, started doing CrossFit, um, worked for Reebok CrossFit set when I was over there. Um, did that for three years and knew that I wanted to come back and uh, open my own gym. Uh, came back in 2014. Um, did my education degree, become a teacher and opened up a gym at the same time across at 782, which we've had for seven and a half years now. I co-own with my business partner, Mike Ives. I came back to teach and open a CrossFit gym. And now nearly eight years later, I'm not teaching anymore. I gave that up, uh, two or three years ago and, uh, just running a couple of gyms full time. Um, so yeah, and that's what I've been doing for the past little while. So did you find CrossFit when you were working with Reebok uh, overseas? Um, no, to be honest, like Reebok came in later. We were uh, at a small like studio gym in Korea. Um, my boss at the time is from New Zealand, uh, Cody Hunter. Um, we were just training, doing boot camp stuff, um, just kind of hanging out. And then we saw these videos of CrossFit and we started looking them up, trying things out, trying toaster bar, trying thrusters. And we're like, this is crazy. And then we just instantly were hooked. Um, and then we just started doing that ourselves in 2010 and then at the small gym and then Reebok came on board, um, later on, probably like a year later, I got my L1 and then started coaching with them, um, and coached there for three years before I came back home. And that's how I got my start in CrossFit, uh, super fortunate. And again, like 11, 12 years later, still going strong with it. So you really started as an athlete. Um, and where did, where did that kind of take you? Yeah, not, not too far. That's uh, an athlete's uh, a strong statement there. Um, I definitely uh, really enjoyed it. I played hockey and a little bit of soccer growing up all my life, um, but I was never really talented. I just kind of worked hard um, and CrossFit was perfect for that. Enjoyed it. I did go to regionals in 2012 and uh, don't look me up because you won't see too many good results. Um, <laughs> about three months into doing CrossFit kind of like more regularly. Um, and then I realized pretty much right after that, like I love the coaching aspect of it. Um, I didn't really 
take on a skills too quickly. It took me a long time to like learn how to do like a handstand push up and overhead squat, all those things. Um, and I think that's why I enjoyed the coaching because I liked learning how to do things properly. Um, and it took me a while to learn them. So coaching people, I was able to apply those things to working with athletes of all levels. And again, Annika as well, for sure. Yeah. And there's one word in the English language that I have a very hard time saying. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try it. Uh, kinesiology. Yeah. Yes. Kinesiology. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So you have a background in that, which yeah. is the, yeah. you know, the, the study of movement. Mm-hmm. And so why did you go into that? And did you know that that was going to lead to coaching? Definitely not. Um, I just was interested in sports and high school. I played sports um, throughout my life and I just kind of was like, Oh, this is interesting. This is cool to learn about the human body. Um, and I wanted to be a teacher. I always knew that I wanted to teach. Um, and so going into kinesiology would eventually give me my education degree down the road, which it did. Um, I actually, right now, I, I have a, a little gig. I teach at a local college here, Hong College. I teach physiology of human movement, um, just basically how the body moves. And then I teach a strength and conditioning course as well. So it's just part time. I just do that a few times a week. Um, so kind of like that passion to teach and the passion about sports and athletics kind of led me to where I am right now. And, and, uh, I like doing it. I think I'm okay at it and stuff. And so it's just kind of where I am right now with everything. Well, really coaching and teaching are pretty much the same thing, right? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And so like we're working with Annika, I I think that is teaching or I think that is teaching and, and she's a wonderful mover. Um, but it's more about like just teaching her, like to learn about her body and how to move her body appropriately. Um, so she can do the best in competition. And then with our classes it's teaching how to move better in the gym so they can do well for their everyday life so the last little piece of background i want to kind of get into is so you worked for reebok overseas and then you opened your own gym what was the difference between the two so i worked for reebok crossfit sentinel um over in korea and then reebok was trying to make a big push to open up these gyms and different parts of the world, which was awesome because they gave us a bunch of gear, um, this great facility. And I was like a junior coach at the time I was new. Um, and then I started working with like youth programs, which is like, was my passion and still is my passion at the time I started doing teens program, teens programs with Reebok process Sentinel, um, and kind of branched out with that. Um, and that's kind of what led me to like, be like, okay, I, I want to do this full time. I want to move back to PEI where I'm from. Um, and then open my own spot and open my own spot. That kind of gave me the flexibility to run the gym and run programs the way I wanted to. Um, like we have a really big, uh, fun teens kids program. That's where Annika got started when she was 12. Um, and kind of do things the way I wanted to do them and uh, build a culture and community that I wanted to build. Cool. Sure. Uh, and yeah. so you're, you actually ended up getting all the way through CrossFit level three. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I did my. You have, level, you have your weightlifting, CrossFit yeah. weightlifting, CrossFit yeah, yeah, yeah. gymnastics, and CrossFit yeah. kids. Yeah, I just, I really, I think CrossFit is such a great way to like improve people's lives in the gym, like physically, but also like mentally outside the gym as well. It helps with like how to deal with problems and how to work through tough parts of your life. Um, you practice that in the gym every day. You go to a workout and you're like, "This is terrible. Why am I doing this?" Um, you find a way through it, and that leads you to like be better at, um, different things, um, outside of the gym, I believe. So what, what made you want to go get all this continuing education? Um, at the time it was just like, I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn as much as I could. I wanted to soak it all in. I wanted to learn how to train people. I wanted to learn how to, um, learn how to move, get people to move better. Um, I wanted to learn how to, I wanted to teach people, um, what physical activity you could do for yourself, um, and help you mentally with that as well. Just one second, Scott, I got my dog and he just got into something right now. Uh, we, one second right here. See. No, no problem. My dog is probably getting into something upstairs right now. Yeah. Uh, he has developed this habit every time I come downstairs. There we go. That'll be funny. Up. For anyone that knows me, I have a, a little golden retriever pup, uh, Freddie and, uh, yeah, he just got into something, so I decided to get that from him. Thank you. So how old is he? He's one year. He's uh, quite a dude. He's right here. Um, he's right there. He's just chilling right now. But yeah, he's a year and a little bit now. Um, but yeah, I missed him, so we had some time together the past couple of days, so it's nice. Yeah, I have a, I have a little Chihuahua Yorkie mix. Yeah, okay. Uh, but he looks, okay. Like, he looks like a Rottweiler, but just a teeny tiny one. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like 17 pounds. Um, yeah. And uh, his name is Walter. And hey. when I went away, he chewed up all of my stuff on my desk. Yeah. Yeah. And now that I'm back, he, he, every time I come downstairs, he thinks I'm leaving. Yeah. So he chews something up. Yeah. He'll follow me everywhere. Like I'm surprised. Like he's looking over me right now. He's like, why'd you take that away from me? But anyone that knows him and knows me, he's like the friendliest dog in the world. We haven't met the gym all the time. And Annika has a dog as well. Um, Zoe and they're quite good friends and, and they love to have a little play together. So. Okay. So back to your continuing education. Yeah. Did, did that come before or after you met, Ma, uh, met Annika? Um, a lot of it became before. Um, so I did my level one, right. And then I did my, my, uh, uh, gymnastics and my kids when I was in Korea, I actually, uh, the company I worked for Sentinel flew me over to San Jose I went to like NC or, or uh, NorCal CrossFit at the time. Um, did my kids certificate there. So I got to do a lot of cool things like that. And then I did my L2 when I was back home, um, went down to Boston to do that. Austin Maliola did my level two when he did my level one. Um, he was in Korea quite a bit, actually kind of expanding CrossFit and whatnot. So I got to meet him again. And I actually saw him down in Wadapalooza again, which was quite cool. And then I needed to get better at how to coach weightlifting. It's definitely one of my weaknesses as a coach. Um, did my weightlift, weightlift, weightlifting certificate. Um, and then I said, I'm going to keep going with this. This is my life. This is what I want to do. I want to keep learning. And then did my level three last year. Um, and not necessarily like that definitely has helped me kind of coach Monica, but just for my own general um, knowledge and just to help people in general is why I continue doing it. And I've taken that with me, like teaching at the college I teach at um, has helped me with that for sure. What, what I think is amazing is like you, you didn't know what you were getting prepped for while you were getting prepped, right? You didn't 100%. know what was going to walk in the door. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then it all kind of, it, it, you know, whether, whether you believe in God or a universe or whatever, something happened at that moment yes. that had you prepared for when Annika walked in the door. Yes. So, so let's, let's walk through that. So, so like, how did you first meet? So it's crazy. So like back in, with the gym we were running and we had a teens program at this point and um, we had like five or ten teens coming in after school to train um Annika was going into grade eight um she needed to do something she was just finishing her gymnastics kind of career I guess and she had little injuries from that her parents were like you got to do something physical and uh, Mike my uh co-owner of the gym my business partner Mike Ives he has a taekwondo studio as well so she walked in to do taekwondo with Mike and you can see Annika really good for handstand pushups for her arms, but maybe not the best as a fighter. Um, but so Mike was like, why don't you try this CrossFit thing? Um, and she was like, what's that? And then, so I just happened to be at the gym and Mike and I kind of walked her through a couple of things. She started coming to classes regularly. Her first class was the next day. Um, I was coaching it. Mike's like, yep, she's going to do great. I was like, sweet. And then she just never stopped asking questions, never stopped wanting to learn remember like third or fourth class, she was like, Brett, you need to teach me how to do a bar muscle up. She's like, I've seen a video of it. I need to know how to do it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, let's get our pull-ups first. Let's get our ring row. Let's get our foundations. But that's what drives her to be, again, one of the best and to be the best one day um, is that knowledge and that kind of ability to kind of ask questions and work through things. So how long um, working with her, did you know that she had the potential to be special? Um, probably, I remember I told her the story whenever we were down there in Wadapalooza, I said, there's about a couple of years in, I knew she was always good. She was a good mover. She learned really quickly. She listened really well. Um, she kind of made big gains in certain things. I remember a Sunday morning, she came in when she was probably 14 at the time with her parents and it was like a squat clean workout and it was 155, which was heavy at that time for a lot of females. Um, this is back in 2016. And she started repping out squat cleans at 155 with like textbook form um, and doing like unbroken, like 15, 20 toast to bar and rowing at a decent pace. And I was like, oh, this, this is good. This is really cool. Um, and she was still too young to do at the open at that point. Um, and the teen division wasn't super well established at that, at that point. Um, but it was like, okay, what can we do? How can we make this work? And then she did the open just for fun um, that year. Um, and then the next year is when she started kind of doing it for real. But that was, a, I remember that Sunday morning pretty clearly of like, okay, this girl moves really well. She's dedicated. She has some talent with it, but she's also like asking the right questions. She wants to get better. She wants to learn. So she was kind of the athlete that we call um, 
a bunch of near misses, right? Yeah. 100%. Um, one CrossFit changed the rules of the age groups um, yeah. on her. They yeah. changed the, the rules on how many people get to go to the games. Yeah. Yep. Um, so she just missed going to the games several so times. times. She lost one year of eligibility yep. uh, to even go in the team division. Yeah. And the year she finishes second, they cancel. Yeah. So like 2007 or 2018 was her first year in the open. She did well in the open. And then the AGOQ came up and she had like a lot of really good strengths and a lot of things that like she wasn't quite proficient at yet. Um, and she did it, um, the AGOQ. Um, she didn't really, not really knowing what the open was at that point still. Um, she did really well in this thruster. Um, then this thruster rope climb workout came up. The first time she did it, she crushed it. Absolutely. Got a great time. Um, but I saw there was a little mistake um, with her on the way down from the rope climb. She was climbing up. She got to her 15 foot on the way down. She put her hand on the line instead of underneath it. She came down as her second last rep, went back up, came down, finished it. And then we said afterwards, we're like, that's no rep. And so we battled with that in our mind, looked at the rule books. And at the end of the day, we couldn't submit that score. Um, and it was a really good score. We said, we got to do it again. Um, at that point, it was one of those things where it's like, she wasn't as strong mentally probably as she is now or definitely not. Um, and she couldn't get that score again or replicate it. Um, and that was, it is what it is. Um, but again, like I said, that led her to finishing 21st instead of 20th. And they took the top 20 that, that year. Um, and this did that one time, but looking at that, that result or looking at that decision was like super important in terms of building adversity, um, building resiliency through adversity for her um, and kind of led her to where she's at now. The next year, 2019, she finished 13th the AGOQ. So it would have been definitely a spot of the games as a team the year before, but then they dropped it to top 10. So she didn't get to go that year. Next year, training was great. Awesome. Went down to Wadapalooza as a team, had some fun, came back with the AGOQ, crushed it, finished second behind Emma Carey, who was absolutely phenomenal athlete. And I met her in Wadapalooza. She's a great person, phenomenal person. Didn't get to go to the games that year. Um, was like, okay, well, took a few months just to recoup, chill. And then um, get ready for 2021 and then missed um, finishing the top five at the Atlas games online by probably three to five seconds um, in any one of the workouts. And uh, then, yeah, came out Wadapalooza and kind of showed everyone who she is. And now we move ahead from there. So I want to back up a little bit and unpack a few of these things. Okay. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So, so 2020 there's, there's a big decision that has to be made. Yeah. She finished a second in the AGOQ. CrossFit cancels the team division of the games yeah. because of COVID. Yeah. yeah. And she's invited to the Fit Fitness, the Fit Fitness, the mm. Pit Fitness Ranch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I she has a yet. decision to make. Does she go mm. compete mm. or she does she just prepare to go into the open division and move on? So, what were those conversations like? So, like I said, a couple of months, we did a big parade for her. We did, uh, it was like when everything was shut down. So we did like a car parade for her and then celebrated that way to give her something. Um, that same year, actually, I'll give a shout out. My, my business partner, Mike, finished 13th that year in the AGOQ for the 50 to 54. And if it would have been top 20 going, he would have qualified, but it was only top 10. So just big shout out to Mike there as well. He, he, he uh, did great work that year too, but then, a couple months later, I think it was like probably just before the summer started, we made a decision and she was her decision. She said, yeah, I want to just think about my future. I want to think about competing in the elite division, the adult division. I said, great. I looked at her. I was like, you're not going to like what I'm going to say, but the next three to six months, we're going to turn you into a runner. Um, we're going to get you to become a good long distance, short distance, middle distance runner. Um, we got our running coach, uh, Mike Peterson. Um, he came on board and worked with her probably three times a week. I would run with her. Um, Mike's daughter, who was six, would run with her. And we just said, we got to give you that foundation. We got to get you that aerobic foundation because the high school gymnastics, as you saw, Wada Blues, the weightlifting is fantastic. She just was missing that piece underneath everything, that base. And so we just trained like a runner. We just ran three days a week, did a little bit of CrossFit here and there um, up until basically Christmas and then dabbled in some like burpees and fireball cycling and a little bit of weakness for sure. Um, but primarily we ran hard and long and lots for six months um, and then did some rowing, did some burpees, did some barbell cycling kind of thing. 
and stuff. How how hard was it to convince her not to go to that competition? Uh, it was it wasn't too hard to be honest. Like she was quite good about it. She wanted to go. She wanted to get that experience. But with Annika, like she trusts me, and and I definitely trust her. If she wanted to go, I would have said, "Sweet, go ahead." Um, but she she knew what where I stood and I she knew that I wanted her to focus on the next stage of her career um, and kind of just like look at that and say this is done this is a, it, it is what it is she trusted me she knew that I had her best interest in mind um, so at the end of the day she made that decision for herself but she definitely like after a few days of thinking about it she knew it was the right decision and looking back it definitely was so yeah because it's funny because if you look back at that at that pit fitness ranch you yeah. know like the Mal O'Briens and the yeah. Olivia Sulix went. Um, but Emma and Annika didn't. So it yeah. was like this divide, you know, yeah, yeah. of who went and who didn't. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of plays out going forward. I think like, it's great. Like it's, each person's going to be different. And for her, it was like, we're a little old PEI. Like I said, it would be a tough time just to get down there and do it. Um, it's just, I think once you make a decision, you just have to stick with it and just like put your head down and go with it. Like for the girls that went, it, it's definitely worked out for them for, like I said, Mal and and Olivia and, and whatnot. Um, and met Olivia Sula, great person as well, great competitor on the weekend. Um, but yeah, so each person's going to have a different path to get where they want to go for sure. And so, um, and Annika put it to us that you didn't let her touch a barbell for like six months. Yeah. That was the running phase. It was legit. So it's the truth. You did not let yeah. her touch a barbell. Uh, like we did a little barbell cycling, but legit, like at that time doing AGOQ, I think she had a 245 clean and jerk, which would be like top, top with the games, like the elite oh, yeah. level athletes. So I was like, if you want to be good at this, like I just kind of said to her, like, we, we have to, we have to do this. Like I said, if you don't want to be good at this, if you just want to have fun, like, I don't mind coaching you that way, but knowing Annika, and you, once you will fully meet her, like, you'll know, she wants to be really good. She wants to be the best. I was like, we have to do this. We have to do it this way, or we might as well just not do it at all. Well, and, and, and I, th- I love the way you put that because that's the test, right? Because yeah. you have to be willing to do the things that suck mm-hmm. all day the in and day out <laughs> to be the yeah. best at, at what you want to do. Yes. 100%. And that's, that's the thing that separates her. Definitely. Is that like early on, like she just would train for fun. Um, but that's fun for her now. Like, if I program something and I'm like, here's your day, here's your plan. And she's like, there's not enough burpees in there. There's not enough running in there. I'm like, well, this is the time of season. We don't need to be doing that. She's like, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. But she wants to do the things she's bad at and she wants to get better at them. Um, and I've learned as a coach, like how to like talk to her and loud, how to like frame it in a way that this is why we're doing this. And this is how we're doing it. And this is why we're going to continue doing it this way. And this is why we're doing it this time of the season. Um, and so there's definitely been some hard conversations and there's times when I'm like, if you don't want this, like you have to be the one that wants this more than anybody. Like, I know how talented you are. I know how talented you're going to be. I know how good you can be, but you have to want it more than anybody else around you. So then we move into the 2021 season. Yep. Right. And at this point we'd known Annika for a year. Yeah. Open comes and she kills it. Yeah. Right. Kills uh, it kills it semifinals so or oh, yeah. uh the uh quarterfinals come yeah kills it yeah in her like mind we, though we are getting excited off. here in yeah. columbus ohio and yeah. delaware for annika mm-hmm. so in the open we set a goal we we're like okay this is where you finished last year it was like 600 and something i was like okay given your trajectory where you've come from we're going we were like 1100th in like 2000 and 19 2020 we we're 600 2021 let's go top 300 for the open and then try to get top 120 with semifinals the open comes she's not happy with the performances she's like not doing what she believes she can do i was like this is not the time to do well you're going to do well later on all of a sudden the open finishes she's top 60 in the world which was like a huge shock for us because we were like let's get top 300 like okay maybe like let's just keep training keep doing her thing let's stay humble let's keep working quarterfinals I think she moved up she was still top maybe she was top 50 after the quarterfinals and like I think top 25 in North America like oh wow we're in that top 120 like easy like okay now our expectations change let's let's make a go at this but at the same time we knew that like there's a lot like you have to actually do the work before you can say anything let's get to semifinals let's put that work in and then it was online and took a couple moments to digest that and, and talk through it and say okay let's make it work. Um, 
So it went from like thinking, oh, top 300 to like, oh, let's try to go to the games. Yeah. And so let's remember she was 18 yeah. years old. Yeah. And it hadn't turned 18 yet. It was 17 until June. She has that birthday, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We open in the game. So like she missed the year of teens because where her birthday falls. So Atlas games were the end of June. I think end of June or like early June or end of May, something like that. So, yeah, so like, right around her 18th birthday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She, yeah, she yeah. is going to try to compete and make it to the games. And because she lived in Canada and because of the pandemic, yeah. she was forced to go Atlas games online. Again, online. Which was crushing to her. And you as yeah. a coach then have to like make sure her head is right yep. for this competition, right? Yeah. So what was that like? Um. It was, it was okay. It was like, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It was, it was, and anyone that says, oh, it was oh, perfect is, is lying to you. Like she, it was rocky. Like it was just like, okay, we have to do this. Um, but we have such, like I said, we've had, I, like I said, I've coached her for so long. We have this like trust relationship where I'm like, here's what I need you to do for me. Can you do that? Go do it. Like her headspace, find the right thing, frame it that way. She'll go back. If she needs help getting yourself in the headspace, we'll work on it again. And then she eventually will figure it out. Um, on herself. And she did that. Like I said, I I'm just there guiding her towards her goal. Um, just kind of giving her like little tidbits of like information and like little things where I think she could work on. Um, but ultimately it's her decision to make. And then she framed it and like, she'll usually something will click and be like, okay, if I want to be good, I have to face this adversity. I have to deal with it. And I have to move through with it. And she clicked and she changed it. And then she said, I'm going to do the best I can do. And during semifinals, she missed by like a few seconds, but boy, did she like just, put on a show during that at the gym. Like the gym was a crazy spot to be at that, that weekend. It was phenomenal. She was, she, she moved really well. It was just, she did the best she could in each workout and just was a little bit short at that time. So let's go through that weekend a little bit because yeah. I am at, I am at the West coast classic during that yeah. weekend yeah. in Vegas. Kat and I are in the media room hitting refresh like as the, as the standings are supposed to come out all the time. Yeah. 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 Um, and she was in a top five position. Yeah. All so weekend. That, yeah. Yeah. Until That's, that last day. So now like that friendly Fran workout came out, we're like, sweet 21 chest of bar, 21 thrusters, a little heavy, 21 chest of bar, three rounds. That's her wheelhouse. Like I said, we're working towards not having any wheelhouses, but at the same time, like, there's wheelhouse workouts for everybody. We know that you have a certain body type. You can work as hard as you want. You can't change that. What it is, what it is. She does that workout, crushes this. Um, second workout, that deadlift um, GHD over at squat workout was kind of like a damage control workout. Did way, way better than we expected, like solar soul in that workout. And was second, I think, or third um, after that first day. Um, the next day was... So we're like, okay, that's way better than we expected. This is crazy. Like after like a workout that's your wheelhouse and a workout that's like not, how are we, how are we doing? Um, and then the next day comes up, it's uh, the snatch workout and the muscle up workout, but it had a lot of double unders in it, which has always been a struggle with her. She holds a lot of tension when she double unders, which forces her to like not be able to breathe and recover for the next movement, which we've worked on a ton. Um, she did that. She didn't do as well. Physically, I think, and her standings were good, but she just didn't feel great about it when she finished it. Um, but she did well in the standings. The snatch workout took us a bit by surprise. There's a lot of strong, strong girls in Canada that did really well in that workout. Um, we've addressed that as well, and she's moving the barbell quite well, um, especially the snatch. Um, she's shorter. It's a different, it's a more of a difficult, move, difficult movement for her. Um, she dropped a little bit after day two, and then day three, we're like, we just got to go in and put the work in. Um, we had quite a good moment. Um, there's a video of it. She finished the rope climb row handstand walk and rope climbs and rowing have always been a struggle for her. Just being a shorter athlete. She, handstand walking was great. It was, it was great. It's always been good for her. She's a gymnast and she moves well, but she finished that workout and um, her rope climbs were phenomenal that entire time. Um, I was super pumped. Um, I was super, super excited. We were like yelling and everyone in the gym was going crazy. Um, there's a moment when she finishes, she finishes her last rope climb and I'm behind the camera. And I run out, she runs out. We get this big hug. Like I said, I'm not one to show too much emotion during anything like that, but it was this crazy experience. And then that burpee barbell cycling workout was super tough. Um, it's always been a weakness of her, like burpeeing and then ground overhead. 
really fast. Um, and we did it in testing and it was not the score we wanted it to be. It was like three, it was like three thirty or something. And we saw the scores come up and we're like, Oh, we gotta get, we gotta get better at that. And, um, she came out and she actually did that one Saturday night, um, the night before, and she finished in two fifty or something like that. Like crazy, crazy PR, like was, was just fly. And she did an extra clean and jerk during the set of three or during the third set. And like the co- the judge, the judge, everyone caught it, but she just kept moving. She didn't let a phase or she just kept going. She didn't extra rep on that, which like could have been two or three seconds, could have been extra energy. But like at that point, it is what it is. Um, but it was like this 40 second PR. It was like a big, big win for her. And again, people did really well in that work. There's a lot of girls that just crushed it, did it in 240 something. And, and we put the scores in, we sat around, scores came out, we cried a bunch. Um, and then, yeah, we, we moved, moved forward after that. So kind of a funny story I don't think I've ever told on the show is um, during that weekend, Annika told me that she loved Bear Bells protein bars. Yeah, you yeah, couldn't yeah. You couldn't get them in Canada. Can't get a lot of stuff in Canada sometimes. So they were our sponsor at the time. And I told her if she made the games, I would buy her cases of them and yeah. take them to Madison where Weesh. she could have them. And, yeah. uh, and then she missed by that little bit. And she goes, I guess I get no bear bells. <laughs> and that's what she would do. She would just kind of like take it and it is what it is, but you'll see her at the games this summer for sure. And I hope that still holds true. Um, I'm sure it will. So before we get to this year's games, because, yeah, yeah. because we just had Wadapalooza mm-hmm. and it was truly a coming out party, yeah. but, it, but the weekend didn't start off that way. No. Nope. So this is the first in-person competition, real big girl, mm-hmm. all in competition that yeah, she's yeah. ever got to do because of yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. And yeah, just because of everything, like she's faced adversity for the past four years, day in and day out. Yeah. So, yeah. so you hop on a plane and you head to Miami. Yeah. What, what are you guys thinking? What was the goal for the weekend? The goal for me, to be honest, we had this, we had like a, we have a weekly kind of check-in where it's like, we don't talk about training. We just, training's done. We just chat about like life and like how she's doing in life and how that affects her training, whatever. We use that time to be like, I told her my expectations for you are just like, I don't care if you finish 40th or you finished fourth or you finished 14th. It's all about what we learned from the weekend. It's all about how you stay composed, how you work through different things. That's all I want to see. That's all I'm watching for as a coach. I'm not watching for results. I'm not watching for finishes. She was like, okay, that's good. And she has her own expectations and she can share that with you another time. Um, but I was like, that's all I wanted to see. Um, so I went down there. That's, that was my only goal was to see that. Um, and the first couple of workouts, like I said, the first couple of days, actually, day one and day two, and even that swim workout, she learned two or three or four years, whatever way you want to look at it, of worth of experience in those two days. So everything that like she's done over the past four years to get her there, she all of a sudden was like thrown to the wolves and had to like learn on the fly within two days and take that with her moving forward. And she did all those things the right way. She like, I always, after a workout, we go back, I'd be like, okay, you need to eat. You need to do this. You need to sleep. And because she's a young athlete, she wanted to like hang out and see people. But this weekend she did all the little things right. She came back, she ate, um, she would get some body work done. She would have tried to have a nap, which was like crazy thing. Cause like she, she wants, she wants to be social. She wants to meet people. Um, but she needed to like come back, recover. And when things weren't going right, she stayed like positive. She stayed engaged with the process. Um, she found the silver lining in each workout. what she learned. It was tough. Cause like things weren't going right. She missed a jerk at two five primarily cause she's never used a short bar before. Cause we never had to train for that. Um, a weight that's usually pretty simple for her, no matter how tired she is, she missed that. So like, instead of being like fifth or sixth, she was 10th. Um, the Bayside chipper, there was a bit of an issue with holding the, the, the kettlebells and she didn't know how to hold them the right way and fell and, and uh, crushed the end of that workout. But there was little things that kept happening. She kept learning from, but she never let that get her down. She never let it, um, it would get her down, but she would never let it like kind of weigh her down moving into the next workout. And so going into the final workout, we never talked about it, but we knew it was a good workout for her. She's great at handstand pushups. She's great at squatting. She's great at muscle ups. But we went in with like kind of a neutral, like just do what you can, 
we'll celebrate no matter what happens when you finish it. And then she came out that night and because she did all the little things right all weekend and learned and stayed focused and stayed engaged and recovered and she was able to show off who she was in that workout. So what was cool about that is being in the stadium is yeah. um, it was under the lights. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's this prime time. And if you've yeah. never been to Wadapalooza, it is crazy at night. Yeah, uh, lights going all over the place. And yeah. there was a moment that you saw like a flips, like a switch flip for her. Yes. Um, and I, and I could see it as a, as a spectator, but as a coach, mm -hmm. what kind of went through your mind when you saw that happen? It was like a confidence thing. It was like the moment she heard, and she said it afterwards and she's so genuine. She said, once they started saying my name and they knew who I was because no one knew who she was at, the, at that point is that this confidence went off and she's like, I deserve to be here. Like I, I I'm here for a reason. Like, like I can do handstand pushups. I can keep going. And it was this confidence clicked in that we've been working on and believing in herself to like go out and do your thing. And then good things will happen. And I saw that click in her second or third set. And she was like, okay, I deserve to be here. I'm going to do what I can. And then just focus on just staying in my lane and moving forward. And I saw that happening. And like, I was in the stands by myself because her parents were there, but they were in like a VIP section. I was just in a random stand stands with like random people around me. And I started yelling her name as the, as the commentators were, and people started looking at me being like, you know, I'm like, come on, come on. I'm, I'm screaming. And it was just this cool, cool um, experience for me to be part of the crowd and see what I had seen for the past four or five years and get to see everyone else seeing that moment and being right in the middle of it. And what was cool is every, every set, the confidence grew. Yes. Right. And, and she started to have this strut from like apparatus <laughs> to apparatus. Right. Yeah. And then I have good. to ask you on the last set, yeah. she finishes up, she has to finish up with the overhead squat yeah. and she takes her grips and she like <laughs> throws them to the floor. That's what she does in training. So I was like, I was not surprised. The first one came off and we talked with this a million times. The first one came off, whatever. But that's when we do a workout, like similar kind of style, is that when she finishes her grip work, she chucks them off. And she's she she didn't do anything different than she would do in training. Just the whole world got to see it. But that's who she is. She's just like, she's a driven person. She wears her heart in her sleeve. Um, and she was just like, this is, I'm showing off who I am right now. She understood the moment. Um, and she embraced it and she just worked through it. It was awesome. It was so phenomenal to see. The, the goosebumps I had at that moment, it felt like she kicked in the door. Yeah. Right? She like, did. like world, here. I am here. Yeah. Yeah. Went down and then squat snatched the first one and then just overhead squatted right through. Yeah. Yes. And then this huge yell when she hit the buzzer. She yelled and she finished it. And one thing I'll, I don't yell too much at her when she's training. I just kind of like watch and just assess and move, move forward. I'm not as I used to be when I first coached, but I've learned that like, that doesn't work really for me or for her. But the one thing I always yell at her is I yell, uh, come on. And I say it in kind of this country way. And so when she finished, she yelled, come on. And I like got goosebumps. I like my heart, like was like, wow. Like it was a very genuine moment for me as well. That's awesome. Yeah. So she ended up finishing the week, uh, 12th, 14th. Yes. Yeah, Someone yeah, at 12th. 12th. Yeah, 12th, 12th. Yeah. 12th. Okay. Yeah. Um, so pretty good after a rough, little rough start. Yeah. Um, and you could, you could see a difference in her on Sunday. Oh yeah. Even, um, that she would, she knew she belonged on that floor. Yep. hundred percent. And then you saw that in the, the Dallas event, the Hanson walk. And she went, she, I've never seen her do burpees that fast. Burpees have always been something that we've kind of worked on. So when they said burpees, we're like, okay, we got this. We've done these enough. But I was like, ah, this is not great for her, but I've never seen her do burpees that fast. She flew. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it was, it was awesome to watch. Mm -hmm. um, so she finishes Wadapalooza. Now she's got all this confidence. She's actually been able to do an in-person competition and know that she belongs with some of the best in the world. Yeah. hundred percent. What does, what does 2022 look like now? Um, so now we're just going to train through the open. Um, nothing really changes. Like she just says that conference walking to the open. Um, I'm gonna do like doing the open. I'm like really hoping I told her, like the first thing I said, I was like, just one and done for the open. And she, she's always kind of had that done a couple of times. And she's like, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try that. Um, train through that, um, through the quarters, the gym here. Um, hopefully, and I'm sure there will be a few other people from the gym that, that qualify for the quarter, quarterfinals do that with the gym, make that a big community event. Um, do that through, 
um, after the quarters, like hopefully be in that top 120 again. Like I said, I'm not counting my chickens yet. Just like work for it, getting that top 120 for North America. Um, probably get together with a few other people that we met over there, do some training with them, um, kind of get a little camp together somewhere. Train a little bit before semis because I think you have a bit of time before semis um, and do that, train through it, um, continue working on our weaknesses, um, continue working through that and then show up to semis and then like be ready to bust that door down again. Um, like for her, nothing's really going to be given. It's going to be, she's going to have to earn it all the way through um, and she will do that. Um, and then from there, just work towards that. But the goal is to like, for her is to peak for semis like we did last year and then take a little deload and then, then depending on what happens there and then move forward with that. So you mentioned camps and that yeah. seems to be all the rage, right? But, yeah. yeah but here you are one-on-one <laughs> yeah. and you're, and you're kind of that out, outlier now, Yeah. yeah. But, but there are some other coaches out there like, like yeah. Nick Simpson. Yeah. Good dude. Um, good. Great dude. Met him. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome right. guy. So yeah. you had the opportunity to meet these people at Wadapalooza. Yeah. So you as kind of this independent group, yeah. do you get together now or do you think you'll get together now and kind of compare notes? Yeah, I think that's the plan is that's, that's what it is. It's, it's a, we know and I talk about this all the time. It's like tr- finding your training partners, like living in PEI. Um, she trains with a couple of friends and her mom, her mom is a beast as well. That's what she trains on Saturday and Sunday. I'm just sure she said that before, yep. um, but there's lots of people in the gym that, that can train with her and support her and they'll do a little bit of different variations of what she's doing. Um, but to kind of get that next level is she's going to look at training with a few other people, um, do some traveling. We talked about that. Like we have kind of a plan, um, what the next year will look like in terms of where she'd be training and whatnot. Um, but I think like at the end of the day, like if you're going to be the best at this, you need, like you need someone there that's like focused on you. And, and I think you saw that with like, some of the champs or the, the chance that people have that um, is that having that focus there and then going eventually and doing a camp with somebody for a little bit and then coming back and being like, okay, this is what I took away from this camp and I'm going to work through that. I think she knows the value in that. And I definitely do like, I'm not interested in like, Oh, I'm going to try to get a thousand athletes and train them. I'm like, I want to focus on you. I want to see it through. Um, she knows that um, again, but we, we know that we want to find some training partners to work with just to kind of push her in different things and get that experience, um, working out with like other high, high level competitors. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the old school way before camps, like yeah, the big yeah. athletes would get together at different times. Yeah. Run, run through the paces. And, and I actually yeah. go to Christy O'Connell's gym. Okay. Yeah. I've heard and, great things again. Yeah. And people drop in there all the time to work out with yeah. her. Yeah. Um, but it's just not a permanent camp thing. It's yeah. just, mm-hmm. you know, um, okay. except for Dan Bailey, who lives down the street. Okay, sweet. Cool. Good. Another yeah. legend. Like I said, he was one when I first started, he was like, well, in the scene, he's someone that I was like, oh, this guy's legit person. And then seems like it anyway. And then legit athlete too. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited for you guys this year. I think, um, yeah. you showed what is possible this last weekend mm-hmm. and, um, uh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen this year. Yeah. And I really appreciate you having me on the show. I really appreciate you reaching out to Annika before like anyone knew who she was and now they all know her name and they're going to continue to know her name. So I appreciate you taking that chance with her um, and giving her that kind of outlet to express herself and she's going to continue doing great things. I know it. And I'm so excited for the world to see what she can do. Yeah. It was not a chore for us. Annika is just an awesome person and we love, we love hanging out with her um, and are rooting for her hard. So appreciate that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon, Brett. Awesome. Thanks Scott.